Hey, what's up everybody? 3D Theory here. Today is September 14th, 2024 at 8.12 a.m. And this is vlog number 53. As you can tell, the 3D printer room has had a little bit of a makeover and I've been meaning to do this for quite some time and I finally got around to doing it. It's a lot cleaner in here, a lot more spacious, good for filming and also 3D printing, not so cluttered and we got a good focus here. So there are some things that I'm 3D printing right now that I'll talk about here. So we got the uh, AMS Lite top mount by Bamboo Lab printed out in two plates. And I'm doing this because when I do work, I have such little area to kind of actually build whatever I'm working on. So this will essentially take this AMS Lite combo and put it on top. And I'll have about that much more space on this side. So. That'll be a significant increase in space. On these printers here, I've got some black boxes being printed out with their printer number. It's kind of hard to see, but let's see if I can show it here. This one's number three for printer number three. And basically these are just gonna replace these cardboard boxes down there. And um, I gotta print one for number two and also for number one. So I haven't been able to upload as frequently as I would like. And basically it's been a bit of a, I don't wanna say hectic time, but let's just call it a busy time because for those of you who are new here, by the way, on these 3D printers, on these five Bamboo Lab A1 3D printers, I print out a set of plates and latches for production. So here's some left latches, right latches, left plates in there and right plates. And these attach to a larger product that's not 3D printed. And it's kind of like a mixed media product that I sell. So this tiny 3D print farm is used for those parts and I print it out in gray PETG and they look absolutely fantastic and production has pretty much stopped of these or paused for now because we needed to make 300 units and we've reached that amount now for this bamboo lab a1 with ams light combo i use this to finish up near empty spools of filament so as you can see i got three gray petgs printing this top mount and and spool number one finished up and it automatically moved to spool number two because of how i have it set up in the 3d printer you just pretty much show in the filament section that all of them are the same color and same material and once one finishes out during a print it'll just switch over to the next one so now that we've got the now that we've got kind of like the descriptive part out of the way of what, what we do here at the uh, tiny 3d print farm let me tell you about what's going on so so those 300 plates and latches now are not only being put in so now what i'm doing off camera because i don't really talk about where these plates and latches attach to since this is a 3d printing channel and also business obligations basically it's been kind of busy because i've been putting together the products i have all 300 units and um, it takes about 10 hours a day to put together 12 of our product and um, have them ready for shipping boxed up and i've been kind of juggling the uh this this printer room project getting this thing uh organized and ready for uh, a little makeover along with um, putting together those products what does this all mean for the channel well this means that we're going to be doing some pretty cool stuff coming up i'm preparing the room to look like this uh great coffee by the way because the goal here is that we create cool stuff. We focus on creativity and so we start designing on paper all the way through to having a 3D printed ready product just like we did with the Stealth TV tray. Now, for those of you who haven't seen the Stealth TV tray, there's a whole series on that. Please go ahead and check it out. It's really fun. However, in a, in a short time frame, I'm going to be pretty much putting together like a compilation video of all the stealth TV tray stuff we did. And um, it'll be for easy viewing so you don't have to go back and watch a bunch of vlogs on it. So be sure to check that out. I'm probably gonna release it within about a week. All right, now let's check out the temperature of this room. We're at 78.3 degrees Fahrenheit with a 46% humidity level. And I must say guys, and usually at about this point, I would show you some 3D printed stuff that I have on my Maker World that's for free download. Which includes, which includes Star Wars Thrones for your phone, a laser blade from the film Lightyear, all these cool little things, but I don't have them here right now. This room is nearly complete. It used to be uh, up on this rack here, but instead now I have my filming light on wheels so that I get a little bit better uh, film quality. 
and so I needed more space to move that around. But uh, nonetheless, we got some really cool projects coming up. Those uh, 3D printed parts, we'll probably see them down there. Um, I was thinking about putting filament down there, just boxes and boxes of filament, but I do want to showcase some of the stuff that I have 3D modeled and 3D printed and that are available on my Maker World for free. By the way, link's in the description. And um, so we got some really cool projects that we're going to be working on. So stay tuned. I'm feeling a little bit tired. It's been, uh, been a bit rough with juggling putting together products and getting this print farm room ready. So I am also prototyping a part for my product, um, but I'm not sure if I want to show that just yet, but that's also kind of slated. So it's been a real busy time. <laughs> here um, but nonetheless we're pushing this forward and we're humming along and uh, let me know what you guys think of the new setup do you guys like it i tried going for a cleaner look a more focused doesn't look so much like a, a living space but um carousel of progress this ride and this ride at disney world they used to have this at disneyland but um, they're at Disney World now. They're my two favorite rides there. What do you guys think? Do you have a favorite ride at Disney World? If so, let me know. And if it's one of these two, let me know which one between the two. There is one topic I wanted to cover today. Someone had asked in the comments how I get such clean prints. What do I do to get this really amazing look and i kind of wanted to cover that today i do admit that these prints they even impress me um how clean they come out it's just so nice if you take a look at the plates that i print out it's just absolutely flawless it's perfect it's a perfect 3d print and um i think it all comes down to a few simple factors look at that it's gorgeous I think it comes down to a few simple factors here, and I wish I had a more profound answer for you guys, but I've been in the trenches, let's say with my Creality machines, and um, you know, fine tuning in the slicer software, using the right filaments, the right settings, all that, making sure I'm following 3D modeling best practices, but I must say, that with these Bamboo Lab A1 3D printers, it really changed the game for me. It really changed how I approach 3D printing. If you look at some of my previous vlogs, I used to print with Creality CR10 SEs, and those were nightmares. Very, very bad experiences with those compared to these Bamboo Lab A1 printers. And I had several Creality machines. I had a Creality CR10 Smart, a Creality CR10 S5, which was the worst printer I've ever had, a Creality CR6 Max, which is the best older generation 3D printer I've ever had, and a Creality Ender 3 V2 Neo. And um, I've always had to tinker some way, somehow, with getting good results, either with the machine, with the settings, with my 3D models, accommodating what the Creality can do. And the technology has come so far in the 3D printing world to a culmination of what this printer can bring. So in this point in time in the 3D printing world, this Bamboo Lab A1, for me at least, has presented all of the technologies in the best light to produce such good results. And a few factors I'm going to talk about is one, the 3D printer, two, the slicer software, three, the filament that I'm using. So it all boils down to those three making this amazingly <laughs> clean and smooth looking print. Wow, that came out beautifully, and this is PETG. But take a look at that. By the way, this is that blue PETG that was having a hard time coming out. But let me get some re light reflection off of there. That is so clean and nice. And every time I take it off, I am amazed too. I am honestly always amazed on how beautiful and clean these 3D prints look coming off of these Bamboo Lab A1s. So my answer to that question is, again, basically, I use uh, these Bamboo Lab A1s, which give me the best results I've ever had in 3D printing. And I don't use any special sort of settings. I literally just go into Bamboo Studio. So we're here in Bamboo Studio, and I just wanted to show you that I just select generic PETG. All the settings and quality are the same. 
that come with the uh, slicer software. Strength is red because I increased the number of walls for this specific plate. This is for the uh, Stealth TB tray and I needed to increase strength. But um, usually I do this and I switch this to either triangles, honeycomb, gyroid, or adaptive cubic. I try to avoid using grid and, and also some of you have mentioned in the comments too that you also avoid using grid. But other than that, like the infill pattern is the only thing I would normally change on something that didn't require a whole lot of strength. But the speed is the same as, you know, everything that comes with the generic settings with Bamboo Studio. Another thing that I do change, um, I do use uh, tree supports most of the time. I do want to start experimenting with uh, normal uh, here, but I do want to uh, experiment with some settings. My, my tree support settings are a little bit different here, so uh, if you guys want to see those and see what the differences are, you can. Um, but other than that, everything else is exactly the same that comes with the generic PETG profile. So. I don't have some super fancy, you know, settings here in Bamboo Studio. And I also use PETG filament, which was, mind you, also a difficult thing to do with older generation printers. So you had to, you know, have all these little techniques on how to print with PETG, but this is, I call it the new PLA. So because of how easy it is to print, using Bamboo Lab A1 3D printers. I don't worry, I used to worry about printing with PETG. I'd have to stand around the 3D printers first, you know, half hour, 40 minutes, and just make sure everything's printing fine, no excessive stringing, no warping, and what have you. But yeah, nonetheless, I get these uh, filaments from my supplier on Alibaba, and um, those are the three factors. The printer, the slicer it comes with, and you saw, I just used generic settings, and the filament and that's pretty much it it's it, it all comes down to that so i know i was really rooting for team creality um i was just buying creality printers and going this is the one i want this is the company i'm gonna go with i this is what i know this is the ecosystem i'm used to and um i've been just watching so many people get such good results with bamboo lab a1s and i was dreaming of the day where i didn't have to sit around babysitting the 3d printer you know wasting a bunch of filament on prints that were just failing one after another and i just wanted something where i can press print walk away and come back and i have just fantastic quality prints when i return and I'll tell you what, this was the printer for me. This is the printer for me. This does that. So to give you my very simple answer about how I get such clean 3D prints, again, I wish I had a more profound answer for you guys where you, you know, tweak this, you tweak that. And no, it's just a combination of these elements that are giving that print quality to me. And, and again, when I saw other people experiencing such good print quality. I just thought to myself, I need to give this a try. I need to go ahead and just buy some Bamboo Lab printers and see if they give me the same sort of results. And they certainly do. Um, it was their sale going on and that's when I went and I got them from Micro Center. But I think yesterday I went on their site I bought some nozzles. I got a 0.2 millimeter nozzle, another 0.4 and a 0.6. We're gonna do some fun tests with those. Um, and I saw that they were still going for 339, which is a markdown from 399. And that's how much I paid for them. I paid 339 for them each, except for this one. This one, I, I forgot the exact number, but it was more expensive because it comes with the AMS light. But yeah, I can't wait to put this um, top mount together and I'll bring you guys along for the ride. But nonetheless, guys, I just wanted to pop in, show you what's all been happening. I know it's been a few days since I've posted and um, I got some more changes coming to the 3D print room, just tiny ones and some cool videos slated. So stay tuned. Make sure to check out that Maker World if you want to have some fun, cool prints especially for that stealth TV tray. It's up now on Maker World. It's all for free. Download it, print it out, build it, have fun. Till next time, peace, love, and joy.